sheet. And I have one thing to add to the agenda. Allison had um, created a great survey that we would like the committee to approve to uh, put out on SurveyMonkey. So that uh, we're going to add that um, after we do the meeting dates. And um, just to say we have three new committee members. We have Allison Sturdivant, Dave Cobb, and Pete Zalonis have stepped up. Uh, Denny Casey, Dan Nugent, and Tom Adams um, declined to return uh, for various reasons. And so we thank them for their service on the previous, to the previous effort. And welcome to our new members. Thank you very much. Great to have you. And um, we are going to turn it over to public comment. Uh, so we, we have allotted some time for this. We would like to hear from everyone, but if we also want to get you all home tonight. So if you could just be as concise as possible when you're speaking to allow everyone to have a chance to turn or speak, that would be really great. So um, if you have anything you'd like to say, go ahead and raise your hands. And Get started. Yes, sir. So I'd like to start this out by thanking this committee for the work that they and others have done over the last four plus years in attempting to bring a uh, solid proposal to the community. Uh, regular citizens of our communities that uh, I know you've been uh, paid little or nothing for uh, making this effort. And uh, it's just amazing to me that the uh, work that you've put in to, uh, to bring this proposal forward. I know that not everybody thinks that it's a reasonable proposal. And uh, I look forward to how we can move forward to get to a point where uh, the community can support renovations for the school. But to this point, I wanted to make sure to recognize the work that you put in. Thank you very much. Superintendent and Bristol resident. Allison Sturdivant, member of many boards, Bristol resident. Troy Parity, Bristol resident. Uh, Dustin Corrigan, Bristol resident and a physical education teacher here at Mount Abraham. Matt Brown, Lincoln resident, design tech educator. I'm Chris Pearsall, a member of the Mount Abraham School Board and a Bristol resident. Devin Wendell, athletic director and activities coordinator here at Mount Abraham and a Bristol resident. <clears throat> Brad Johnson, Starksboro resident, and a lawyer. Denise Dalton, Moncton resident. Uh, Peter Zalonis, uh, live here in Crystal Village, structural engineer by profession. I'm Chris Nezen, I've taught here at Mount Abraham, and uh, I teach uh, history in the middle school. And I'm also, uh, sorry, also a Lincoln resident. Alden Harwood, I'm the facilities director, and I am not a resident. And we also have um, Otto Funky, Funky, Funky um, who is a Mount A board member and a uh, Moncton resident. He will be here later. Basketball practice is going on, so he will be here when that ends. So, um, any other comments? Yes, sir. Sure, I'm Al Carnett and from New Haven. And I guess I'll just start this off with a why a lot of people are probably here, uh, just to encourage the board to delay the final vote until town meeting. Um, and uh, just a little background, I've, uh, our two children went to Mount Eight, got a good education, both college degrees from Colorado State and uh, St. Lawrence. And I just want others to continue to have a good education. And I personally voted in favor of the proposal. Um, and thought it was a good proposal, but I worry that we've had two proposals already defeated, 
and I encourage more further community participation being chair of the New Haven Planning Commission and on other boards. I realize your frustration and thank you for the, the thanks <laughs> that was given to this because I know your frustration when you sit down and you you wonder why it was defeated. Was it the second gym? Was it any particular issue? Uh, but I don't think we can um, go wrong by, by having more uh, community participation, by perhaps delaying uh, this until the town meeting get further participation. Um, it just feels like the, the right decision at this point. I worry that uh, after with three strikes, then you're out. Uh, and, I, and I think we need to, uh, this is probably one of the bigger uh, number of people you've ever seen at one of your meetings. I know that frustration too, or you said you've had plenty of public input. Five people show up, maybe 10. And, and, and anyway, I, I feel your, uh, you know, the struggle. Uh, but again, I'm just here as many other maybe are also here to support delaying that for more <coughs> full public participation in the town meeting. <laughs> so um, I wanted to thank all of you for your hard work um, to bring this to the town and to do this much needed renovation. My family fully supports you and this work that you're doing. It's really, really important and really overdue. So don't give up. We're here to support you. And I would like to encourage you to get the students more involved. Um, I think more um, public displays of drawings and you know more student kind of ownership of this in terms of the renovation would be really helpful. The other thing um, that I think might be helpful in getting more people mobilized to um, get out and vote is talking to the local elementary schools and really pulling those parents up through the various um, PTO boards to get them really invested and involved and really understand what the high school that their kids are going to be going to looks like. I think if I had known that when my kids were in elementary school, I would have gotten involved when you started, but I didn't get involved. And so I think it's overdue and I applaud the hard work and please don't give up. We need to do this. Kevin LaRose, first resident. Um, thank you for the work. Uh, somebody mentioned already the gym. I think it's a good place to start with uh, maybe Mr. Lendl can speak to it a little bit, but uh, I support this whole wholeheartedly and I will only support this wholeheartedly with the second gym. My youngest will not see the second gym by the time it's built. Uh, but with that said, you know, we truly want to have kids have ac access to, you know, activities indoors in the winter, whether it be uh, sports or other activities. The second gym has, has got to happen. Uh, you know, when kids start at 6 in the morning here at practice, they finish at 9.30 or 10 at night for four months. Um, you know, think of the folks that live up in Starksboro and Lincoln, you know, have to make those drives down here for those kids. And when you're, in, if your child's in middle school and they decide to play a sport, they get the gym, a half a gym, with 30 other kids twice a week for 30 to 45 minutes. I don't know what kind of basketball team that will make, but it's certainly not going to get much for exercise, uh, which I think is certainly one of the, the benefits of having a second gym in another warm weather space, and certainly our community needs another, another gym. My name is Sally Ober, and I'm just inspired by what Kevin said. Um, I don't know how many of you have come to an evening event here, whether it's a, a meeting or some other activity, and there's students running up and down the hallways we're back to basketball practice and like, I just thought that was really odd like I think they deserve a space that they can work in and not have to run people over because I've been at times where you had to kind of stand aside and let the kids come through and obviously they need a space to practice inside and I'm great it's, I'm grateful that everyone figures out a plan but it's time for a new plan Um, my name is Jessica. I live in Moncton. Um, I just wanted to say that um, I've been very interested in the renovation, but I felt like I got too little information too late. Um, so going forward, I would encourage you to find 
more avenues to share the information. And I'm sorry I don't have any suggestions for that. Um, because when I found out that the $35 million was being proposed because it was going to save us money in the long run, I, I guess I didn't hear that until later. And I felt like that was really relevant to a lot of taxpayers, the idea of saving money over the long haul. But so find a way to pass that information to our community. And good luck. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> My name is Chris Batai, I'm a resident in New Haven. Um, certainly I echo the thanks to you guys that everybody else has just put up. Uh, as someone who is not supportive of a $30 million bond, I want to make it clear, nobody uh, I don't think wants to see you all or the children do with things that they don't need. That's not the point. The issue is sometimes you can't afford all the things that you want. And, you know, this proposal is not unreasonable in scope, I don't think. You know, if you're running out of gym space, if you're running out of uh, space for things, you want more space. Um, I don't think that, I don't think that I can offer you, you know, the suggestion of how you fix that, right? But I, what I do think is that taxpayers in these five towns are not going to support everything that's included in the $30 million plus, plus proposal. Um, and in fact, I. I read on the Facebook page that there was someone who mentioned that the second vote was kind of a lot closer. I hope that nobody draws the wrong conclusion from that. 71 less people voted yes in the second one, and 2,000 people didn't show up. And I don't think that means they changed their minds. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not a bad proposal. It'd be great. I wish you guys had 100 million. Um, I wish that you, know, you could spend as much as you wanted on, on the kids, uh, on this school, to, to make a great school. Um, but I don't think it's there. I don't think the support is there. And, think that the money is there. Um, I think as everybody probably has heard, the state's going to be asking for a whole lot more money this year. And this isn't the end of it. I think we need to you know, make sure that our teachers get good raises. I think we need to take care of the other expenses at the school. I think that if something that's, that's 30 plus million dollars gets approved, everything after that's going to be a battle. Hi, my name is Alan Quickner from Stark Pro. Um, I'm an educator. I visited a number of schools throughout New England. I was on the committee at, in the school district that I worked to build two new schools. I guess I have, I don't, it's, I don't think it's the money. I think it's what we get for the money. And the building doesn't necessarily make what happens in the school. And this is what I'm getting. I talked to probably 100 students in the last couple of years. None of them said anything about the building. What did they say? Uh, some of their programs got cut. Uh, not enough computers. Well, mainly stuff not attached to the school. Something about the labs, the science labs. And Nobody really mentioned the school. And so I, I look up on the state's website. When this school opened, there were over 1,000 students. 2003 and four, there were 969 students. I don't know what the enrollment is this year, but last year it was 669. So there ought to be a lot of space in this school, except I think the gym is not adequate. But so with that being, I think we need to look at what we have. And there are, are there mandates from, for example, uh, about the air quality in this building? If there are, it should have been fixed without the renovation. We don't want kids roaming the school with bad air or poor ventilation through the heating system and so on. So I don't have any qualms, but I'm looking at the, the figures. And then I'm looking at the figures for this school. Now, the other thing I'm thinking is we have, and I'm not sure, it seems like the enrollment keeps going down. I'm not talking about five or ten students, but it doesn't look like we're going to have any great increase in the enrollment. So 
my thing is we should do some things to this school. I, th I don't think the school is worth $36 million, and I think there are other professionals that agree to that, not the architects. Uh, so, architect, no, I've worked with architects personally in my own business, and I've worked with them in developing a school. So, getting back to the nitty gritty. So, I think we should do some things, but we should have I shouldn't hear from kids that the programs got cut. And as a negotiator for the Teachers Association and involvement, every year for 30 years in a fairly, I was in the town, oh guys, this is a bad year. You hear the same story, it's a bad year. Very few years are a good year for the budget. So, my thing is, I want to see kids with the latest technology. The school should be the leader. I don't want the board to tell me, well, Al, we don't have any money. That's why we don't have professional scanners, and we don't have a video studio with the newest equipment so we can run our own programming here. So I think we should look at what are the mandates that the state is saying? What about the air quality? And then what about what the kids are saying? The students here to me and the staff, this is what makes the school. Not $36 million to make some architects rich. So being that said, I think we ought to look at and hear from the teachers and the students, what do we need to make the school quality? And this is a very good school. We got a lot of very good devoted teachers here. And I don't know about the last couple of years, but this school was always clean. And I was appalled when I saw on CAX the tiles and whatnot could have been fixed. That, to me, that was not good publicity. That was, to me, not for it. It was bad. So I think we should look at what can we do? Are the kids comfortable in the school? Are we able to provide quality education? Thank you, folks. Hi, I'm Jody Lathrop, and I own a heritage business in Bristol, Vermont, that's been here since 1841. And I have a question for the committee. How many people on the committee actually own and run a business that owns property in Bristol? If you could raise your hand, I would appreciate that. So one person. How many people on this committee have a job directly related to the school, receive a paycheck from the school, or have an association to the school via a board? Raise your hand, please. Okay, so. We do sit about even. I was just curious about that because it was hard to tell when people introduce themselves. This $35 million project will take our business potentially not able to operate in Bristol anymore. That's just the way it is. We're, we have been able to keep a go of it and keep going, but the property taxes in this town have become so high that we are actually looking at other locations to run our business. And that's sad because it's been here since 1841, 1941 on, since 1941 on South Street. But that is the predicament we're in. And I don't know who we would sell that location to. I really don't. I have talked to some pretty good sized companies that would love to come in and buy it, as well as the other nine properties that we own here in Bristol, which right now are all forest woodland areas. So, this bond really is important to us and it's important to our business. I, my two children went through Mount 8. They both had different, completely different experiences, but both wound up being completely successful outside of it. They do have, and have said to me, Mom, there are things that could be fixed at Mount 8. And I said, yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. We definitely need to do something to the infrastructure of this school. However, I'm not sure outdoor cafeterias are really necessary when you have to push a button to buzz in to get into the building. 
So things like that I look at and I think, hmm, necessity or want. So if the committee could take a moment and at some point go back to the original list that listed all the infrastructure needs and maybe get together with all the, and all the infrastructure needs we have now and work on that first, maybe then we can plan into our budget down the road for some of the wants. And that would definitely make it way more affordable for businesses that are trying to operate and stay in this town and employ people in this town and actually bring businesses to this town. And I would love to see Kevin Harper here at one of these meetings. Maybe some business people could be invited and come into the meetings because he's trying to develop Bristol Works, which is going to be a business park. So I don't, what is he going to have to charge these people to lease these spaces? Will they stay here? And maybe Pat has some insight on that because he does lease from Mr. Harper over, well, Supervisor Newman does, over at Bristol Works now. So looking at the future, five and ten years from now, what other district needs are we going to have? Now that we have our big consolidated board as well. So we're starting out with a 35 million, but what are the other schools going to need? Are they each going to need a 10, 12, 15 million? So it's just very disconcerting for businesses here who are trying to work hard and stay here and employ people. And basically I just think we really need to take a rethink and relook at it. So thank you. Anyone else? Uh, my name is Liam, I live in Moncton, and I might be a little late to the game, so I apologize for any questions that have been answered, but I just sit back here, just learning. Um, so, you know, one thing that I was wondering about is just um, the process, and this might be somewhere online or something that you all have shared out, um, of, you know, picking um, the architecture firm, contractors, and stuff like that. Um, and if there was, you know, an RFP that was put out um, to, you know, get competitive prices and you know, a firm that is going to kind of work with the vision of the um, community members and, you know, I, I mean us, but mostly I mean the students and the teachers. Um, and then, yeah, I guess also I, I think, you know, I'm, I would just put a vote in for, for the practical and, and only doing what we right now, which I think most of this covers things that we really need right now, uh, but that's all we're taking into consideration. Um, uh, Troy, do you want to answer the question about how the architect was selected? And Is that what we're doing? We're gonna well, it, some people are making statements, other people are asking questions, and if someone's an answer to someone's question is the quick answer is yes. <laughs> About five companies responded, came forward with proposals. We looked at several of them. There was a couple of us that have been here from the beginning. Um, that group was chosen for all the various reasons that anybody would choose anytime we do that process. Uh, they worked with the students, with the administration who was in place at that time, and the current administration on the new proposal. They've interviewed teachers ad nauseum, students ad nauseum. The students are now different than the ones who were interviewed originally. Um, and uh, gathered boatloads of information, um, and then created this, the design that actually was the will of the faculty, the staff, and the community, and the group. Um, so they did work very closely with the committee and the, and the group to bring the proposal that when you look at sort of the checklist of the things, that's what they start with. What are the priorities and what are the things that people want? They weren't adding things that we didn't want. They were working from the list. So that's how that went. Uh, <coughs> give you what you were looking for? Anyone else? My name is Patty Hillerly. I live in Bristol. <coughs> former teacher in the district. Um, I, I think it's a, a very important idea that somehow we change our understanding of what this building is and what it is to our community. That if somehow it wasn't only a high school, that it was a place there where there were community classes or potentially community college. And um, a little aside is uh, owning a house and having renovations done on it, getting something fixed, and uh, buying it now because I don't know how quickly the, the, the price is going to go up and how expensive it is. And my 
my hunch is, and I'm not sure, that not much work has been done on the building for years, but I might be wrong. And when this building was originally designed, it was designed because the quote unquote energy shortage, that's why we have spaces within spaces and the renovation. The ventilation is not the healthiest. So. Yes, sir. I'm Jim Schlesinger from Moncton. I'd like to ask all the people on the, on the board who voted no on the bond issue to please raise their hand. That's what I thought. I would suggest that possibly you replace some of the members on this board with 50% of the people who voted no in the last few times. Thank you. David, I know you wanted to. Yeah, I'm uh, David Brin. I'm from Bristol, and my two daughters went to Mount A. <clears throat> they had a fantastic experience here, and we're really proud of that. <coughs> proud of this institution. And this meeting already is, start, is starting to reflect. I actually agree with just about everything that's been said, and yet it's it's from very different sides of the of the, of the issue. I <coughs> think you've made the case. You've worked really hard, and I build on what Dave said. To thank you for all of your incredible work. It's not lost. We're going to be doing this. Just what is it we're going to be doing it is the question. It's going to happen. So I want to thank you for doing what you're doing. I want to reiterate the fact, though, that within the building, there's a consciousness that says, yeah, let's go for it. Outside in Angel Lands, there isn't that consciousness. There's a gap. So I really think it's important to narrow the gap. And one of the ways of doing that, I think, is definitely hold off till town meeting day. That's the time to have this vote. Get people out so that you've got 60%, 50-60% of the voters out. That should be like job one. Then focus on how to narrow the gap between the A's and the no's and the nays. And some of the stuff has already been alluded to here tonight. Something's going to have to come off to push it down a ways in order to get to yes. <clears throat> and I don't think it's going to kill the institution if something comes off. Now, um, what I would su submit is that um, we have to have good air, you have to have good light, you have to have a healthy environment. Sometime down the road, another gym will be great, but I'm not so sure that that's as pressing as some of the other things. <coughs> I'd also say that it would be really <coughs> interesting to engage the students and stuff. I work at the University of Vermont. The kids were all over the Rubenstein School of renovation. And I watched it turn them on fire because they were all psyched. They were gathering data. They were making defenses. They were, they were like on it. And it was really cool. They were listened to. They weren't just engaged. They were empowered. It was really, a really good experience for them. So just to pick on the gym a little bit. And I don't have anything against the gym. I'm a lousy basketball player, but maybe I didn't have enough gym time. But um, <clears throat> I, I think it's great if we can afford it and if we can, as a community, come together and do it. Something that could happen immediately is something the kids could be all over. And that is to take a look at the slope. Take a look at the slope over there and see the, uh, calculate the angle of repose. Actually figure out the stability of that slope and the proximity of the building to that slope. That's something students could do. And the students could be involved in things like solar energy. We don't have to even have to commit to the solar right now, but the kids could be all over figuring out siting and where and what and how that would all work. And they could be just crawling all over these projects. And I think it would be really, really a really good thing. But I think it's really important to narrow the gap between the people that are outside saying no and the people that are on the inside saying yes. I think it can be done. And I just think that. Uh, just have to work really hard between now and town meeting day to, uh, to make that happen. And again, I thank you all very much for your work. Yes, sir. <clears throat> my name is Bruce Speak, and I'm a Bristol resident. <clears throat> and I'd like to add my voice to those who are suggesting that the um, process be slowed a bit um, and uh, that the town meeting day is an appropriate time for that vote to occur for a few reasons. One is I think that <clears throat> community engagement, um, and by community I mean 
within the school, but more or equally as importantly, outside the school um, is paramount. It's what the vote depends upon, <clears throat> vote yes or no. Um, I think that it would be worth investing in a facilitator that can help the community in a series of um, uh, actual uh, meetings and celebrations of the design ideas come together. And uh, from this rich, rich community that we have in these five towns, milk some additional ideas um, about what this building could and should be uh, in the distant future and in the immediate future. I think um, among the ideas that need to be explored is how can this building be revenue positive? In other words, are there ways that this school can actually return money to itself for the community uh, through a vital night uh, class program or extended um, uh, education beyond high school level? Um, and if that is uh, deemed as something that is feasible and realistic, what kind of design changes does that concept trigger? Another thing that I think could be explored is the energy use. By putting solar arrays on the roof, how's that gonna cut the carrying cost and actually contribute something back to the town or to the supervisory district in terms of running the school um, uh, on an expense side of the sheet? Um, <clears throat> I think there are likely to be numerous ideas like this that will take time to milk out and also take time to evaluate the um, feasibility of. Uh, so I think um, uh, an investment in getting these ideas from the community uh, is going to uh, give the community greater ownership in these ideas, probably greater ownership in the school and uh, will be a more uh, uh, rich and productive outcome for all involved. Thank you. We're a little over our, our allotted time for public comments. I don't want to cut anyone off. Does anyone else have anything? Yes. I'm Dave Shen from Lincoln. And I would also like to lend my voice in saying to please wait until Why I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just so you see where
I've also been late to this to this process. I'm very interested. I don't have kids in the school. Um, I didn't go to the school. I think the discussion that I'm hearing tonight is really interesting because it's very clear to me. I did come to the meeting, the, the tour of the school. It's very clear that there are things that need to be done here. I walked into the wrestling room. I practically passed out because the air quality is so bad. In there. there just wasn't, there wasn't enough air. And I think it's great to talk about a lot of these innovative things, these longer term things, these taking time but I think we've got two different things that are going on right here, right? There's a very clear need. There's stuff that absolutely must be done. There's a community out here that is telling you clearly several times, we can't afford, we can't afford this, especially with some of the additional tax increases that appear to be on the horizon. So, so maybe it's a two-pronged approach, right? It's let's figure out what the real need is right now to improve this facility, to improve the learning conditions for the kids. And then let's engage the kids and create a longer term plan where we look at solar power, where we look at community, bringing the community in and creating, you know, those are the kinds of things that are built over years. And we've kind of lost three years here from the first bond vote to the second where where it kind of from a community standpoint, it feels like people disappear, right? It feels like the, I mean, I don't know what you folks were doing, I'm sure you were continuing, but it, it, it feels like there was a gap there and really there should have been ongoing, ongoing dialogue and figuring out what the community wants. It sounds like it's been very, you've been very successful at figuring out what the kids want, what the, what the staff want. But the community is the community is amorphous, and it's only through some of these meetings that we start to hear that some people are really attached to the new gym idea, but other people say maybe that's not so much of a need, maybe it's a want. So, so I'd just like to throw out that maybe maybe what we need is some kind of a two-phased approach, and maybe that at least would get a first bond vote passed, and then we can go and look at some of these more creative, innovative, interesting ideas and make it a, a, a longer term thing. Thank you. Right, last one. <laughs> uh, my name is John Turner. I live here in Bristol. We farm down behind the big wheel off of Route 116. Um, we're actively engaged with our community on a local, statewide, and national level. And one of the things that I've noticed in the last 10 years of this community engagement is the impact that small, slow solutions have on the process and on the impact that that process will have. Um, I agree with everything that's been said here this evening. I think $36 million is a lot to chew, and I would like to see it prioritized. I have two little boys, so I have to think about what their school is going to look like in the future, and I think that renovations are key and crucial to a healthy you know, learning environment. Um, but I also think that it's really important to get in, uh, input and feedback from the students that are actively engaged here on a daily basis and to see like what it is their needs are that need to be met and how they can actually have a better education with or without renovations, whether it's through service learning projects or, or, or community service, whatever that looks like. There's a lot of opportunity here to get them out to look at it, uh, an embankment. For some people, it's just a hill, but for some you know, ecology geeks, it's a whole other ecosystem that you can do some really cool things on. And there's a lot of opportunity there for learning that I think that should be, you know, considered. Um, another thing that I also feel is important to, to examine is the garden situation that you have. Um, there's a lot of opportunity there, and there's really amazing examples on a state level and on a national level of the impact that kids engage with the community gardens and with their school gardens has on their health and well-being. My farm is one of two farms in the entire country to receive a national innovation grant from the Farm to School Network, and I've reached out to the school districts in the five towns area on a number of occasions, wanting to donate my time and efforts to help kids act as a mentor. And there hasn't been a whole lot of feedback, and for me that's kind of a bummer because it's 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 good for us to be engaged and it shows them that that we actually give a damn about them. We need to invest in our kids. We need to invest in our youth, whether they're our own, you know, kids or not. And um, there's a lot of active 
and really dedicated community members in this room and around this area that want to see you guys succeed and want to help out. And I would encourage you to continue to wait until the town hall meeting to for this vote so that way we can continue to engage our community and bring forth a better understanding, understanding and provide better clarity so that they know what they're investing in. Thank you. I don't want to not give anyone a chance to speak, but we do need to get <laughs> moving on with tonight. Otherwise, we're not going to be home before Christmas. So, are you going to have another public meeting where people can talk? All meetings are public, and there's yeah. always public comment. At, and there's also another time for it at the end of tonight. So, um, yeah, there's, you're always welcome. Um, we're going to, uh, real quick, uh, knock the minutes off the agenda if someone wants to make a motion to approve the minutes. Please. Second. Awesome. Any discussion? All right. All in favor of approving the minutes? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I know Patrick had prepared a statement about where we've been and what's going on. Do you want to bring everybody up to date before we turn it over to Jess. I think you're referring to the sort of the larger sort of state picture. Right. I think someone mentioned earlier the, the deficit that we're going to be finding ourselves having to overcome. Uh, and that's real. Uh, you know, it's the talk that what started the talk started at a $50 million deficit statewide. Now it's more an $80 million deficit. We'll see what it ends up at. Um, and that's the reality. It's, uh, it's I think someone else was talking about the number of years of difficult budgets and I hear the same thing. Uh, every year it seems to be a difficult budget year. In fact, a couple of months ago, I was at a state board meeting, um, sort of a regional board meeting down at Otter Valley High School, and a board member asked a representative from the governor's office that question, when are these really difficult budget years going to end? Like, it feels like it's every year is a difficult budget year. Uh, and that person's response was, when Vermont starts growing again. At the state level, Vermont's losing population. Uh, Vermont's losing students, um, and the population that remains is aging. We lose six people from the workforce every day in Vermont. So the, the future outlook if something doesn't change for Vermont is not great. Um, and part of that is the affordability of Vermont. Um, and so we have this, this budget shortfall that we have to make up for. Um, I think over the years, those, those budget, those difficult budget years um, have been, um, we sort of hit our targets, whatever those difficult targets might have been, often by taking away from maintenance on the buildings. And I think that's part of what we're finding ourselves in now. Um, and we're at a point where we can't continue to do that. Um, at the state level, the conversation is talking a lot about staffing levels and the need to to take a serious look at uh, the levels of staffing we have given the number of students we have. Um, Vermont has more staff per student than any other state in the country, and that's part of what makes education in Vermont um, as costly as it is. So we have to address those realities of difficult uh, budget times, difficult financial times for the future of Vermont, um, but certainly at Mount Aid, it can no longer come on at the expense of taking care of the building. The reality is if the building gets to a point where it can't operate, nobody here has a job. Um, and then we have even more difficult problems that we have to figure out. Um, so despite the fact that we have some challenging financial times, we still need to figure out a way to address the needs of the building to keep it functional and, and the best place we can make it for the kids. So I'm going to turn it over to Jess. She's going to facilitate uh, census building exercise and what you all view is the priorities of the building um, in the packet if you got one there was a list of what the, the renovation committee went through this exercise last spring um, and there's you'll see the list of what we came up with and how many votes each one got you're not limited to this list if you have another priority you'd like to see but um, this is just what we came up with, and these priorities were what the architect addressed in this proposal. So, um, over to Jess. 
So uh, you'll have to be a little flexible with me. I didn't know how many people to put there for, so we're going to be doing some on the fly, kind of um, making it work. But I am hopeful to engage us in a process that is very similar to what the committee went through uh, last spring and really working to distill down feedback that was gained from community members, students, uh, faculty, and really trying to figure out with many competing priorities, you can see them in the room already, um, how are we going to get some clarity about what we need to be prioritized in a project. Um, and so it's less about putting a price tag on anything and more about saying, what is all this feedback telling us are the emerging priorities of the community? And you are community members, so certainly if something isn't showing up there, you might add it to the list. Um, and I'll talk about the process uh, in a second. But really it's about kind of listening to the feedback that is there, shoring it up against yours and kind of seeing what, what is emerging as commonalities. So in a, a hope of giving some framework for our work together, have uh, drafted some agreements that hopefully will just help us to work together uh, and thinking about assuming positive intentions, which I think this group has done phenomenally at tonight. Uh, but in contentious conversation, that can, that can get hard. Um, seek common ground first. And that's um, where, as we look at all this feedback, what's in common before we kind of, what, what unites us before what divides us? So kind of try to find that common ground. Uh, share airtime, so step up appropriately if you're um, feeling a little quiet, and step back if you feel like you need to give space for others to have a voice, and just monitor that for yourself. Um, see first to understand. Uh, these are pretty typical protocol uh, agreements, so hopefully they're palatable to you. But really try to wrestle um, with a question or with feedback rather than um, kind of a gut reaction. Just give room for multiple perspectives. And then expect and accept diverse and divergent voices. We are not going to agree on everything. Um, we should expect that and really accept it and work it into our process. So hopefully if we follow the process, um, and you'll notice I'm going to pr pretty strongly facilitate at times because we, we have two hours for this process right now. And I'm assuming you do want to get home. Maybe that kind of passion. So um, if we have to truncate it and maybe revisit it at a different meeting or somehow tailor it as we get to the end, um, not sure how it might might work out the group this large, um, but it's a it's a good structure. So hopefully that'll support us. So um, want to give a little overview of the process. Uh, I'm going to give uh, just a five minute bullet points of just how we got to where we are because there's a, a varying level of background information that folks have here, and so I just wanted to kind of really march out the bare bones of the process of how we got to where we are. Um, you are going to receive packets, and I think rather than um, kill a ton more trees, you might want to split the packet apart, share it with someone next to you, swap, and just make sure that you get access to what you need. Um, and the packets contain uh, feedback that was given by students in 2014, as well as faculty and community members then um, after the vote. So we have community members who really were talking about what priorities they would have liked to see then, what their concerns were then. Um, so, and then all the way marching up to 2017 where there is um, some new feedback also to chew on. So there is a lot here and the cover sheet is just uh, themes that were in the 2014 feedback because this is the community feedback from 2014 and it's 110 pages. And so um, the committee at that time distilled it down to themes. Um, but there are copies here if you'd like to dig into the nitty gritty kind of responses to every single question. So I wanted to give all of those resources to folks to really start to say what, what is the voice of our community. Um, and then uh, you will end up, and this is kind of where we'll be tapping some of our uh, past community members who engaged in this, because they'll need to scribe for you and help you out here, and we'll need to really take up this whole room, which is awesome that we get to do this tonight. Um, we'll be setting up uh, stations where you will be in groups of about 10, and you will, after distilling all this down, having some individual think time, go in rounds and just say one thing that, you, that arose as a priority out of what you read and what you were feeling. Um, and it, you don't need to comment on it. It really, if, it take, if it's less than short and sweet, you might be overdoing it, right? You're just listing. I think a new gym is important. I think outdoor cafeterias are important. Whatever it might be, you just list it. Um, and then you go around till everybody has exhausted their list. And then you are going to partner up with a group next to you and compare your lists and then distill them down even further. So you'll start to eliminate things that, that maybe um, are duplicates. And there's a real level of kind of respect for one's voice in this, that if someone um, says, 
oh, that doesn't the new gym, it's not the same thing as more PE space. And if the person who's offering up more PE space says, no, I don't think it's the same, then it gets added to the list. There's not a lot of discussion. The person who is offering the suggestion, uh, if they don't agree, that's that's the way that stands. And that, you'll, you'll come to test that a little bit if you are in your group. So just want to be really clear about that. Um, and then we start, and this is where we might, we might start losing some steam, but we'll see, um, the voting. So you basically, you get 10 votes in two rounds, and it's very public. So it's not one of those like sticky dot things where you can kind of hide behind, like I put all my 10 here. Um, it's, it's really public, and so you'll end up in a group of about 20, and you will be going in around and saying, I would like to put five under this priority. I would like to put five under this priority. And it, you, you can see why we might get a little bogged down in process, but it, I, I think the committee felt it was really important for you to engage in, in this input and engage with one another to kind of go through what the committee um, had to had to cycle through, um, and then you'll see: can we reduce or eliminate anything from this list? And there are going to be things that have no votes after that those first two rounds, and so it's really easy to kind of lob some things off the list, and then you have a final round to five votes. So based on what you're seeing, the, the the will of the group to emerge to, if you don't see that something that you value is getting a lot of votes, you have five left. Plunk it down and say, I need this to be highlighted as a priority. Um, so it's really, it's you get to see the will of the group emerge through this process, which is pretty, it's pretty awesome. Um, and so hopefully we get to that point. We might end up with more lists than we can distill down or figure out, but this committee can take that back, pull them all together, um, and at least have a good idea of the priorities of the group. So, um, are there any process questions? And there will be because I have, I have one. Yes. Because um, when I look at this list, I think of all the background knowledge I have yep. that other people may not even be thinking about. Yep. And I'm wondering when would we address some of those? Like the swimming pool is not mentioned at all here. Yep. And that new gym means we're not filling in the swimming pool, um, which is contentious for a lot of people in the community. Um, and when would we address that the new gym means that we don't pay for classrooms temporarily for a couple million dollars and then not have them at the end. Like I think there's some real significant background knowledge that people just may, it's clear that people are coming in at various stages. And I think having some clear understanding about the gym doesn't really cost what people think it costs because we'd have to buy swing space that we would lose at the end is really important information. And I don't know, is that gonna come up in these I think right now the purpose was to just, are we listening to the feedback that we've been given over the years? Okay. Are we wrestling it with it as a community and really making sure that it reflects the group's priorities? And then I think once we see what that, what emerges from that, the second meeting might be coming back to fill in the gaps and say, okay, well, if this committee, given all that background knowledge, is seeing this emerge from the community, maybe this is where we need to do some okay. education and some engagement around. So I think it will just help to give an understanding of where the community needs to move of different ways, for sure. But I think in the feedback, um, and I would encourage folks to flip through the community feedback as well. I mean, you're going to see keep the pool or I won't vote for it, get rid of the pool or I won't vote for it. You're going to see exactly what this community uh, this committee wrestled with and how we came out with the $35 million. Uh, I just have a quick question. Sure. Where does this process relate to fiscal responsibility? The chart would work for me if there was pricing to the side. Well, and that was the, what we wanted to say is we knew, and this is, I can get right into the overview because this is a little bit in the overview. I was going to give you where, how we got here. Um, really, the committee was charged last late winter with giving a revised proposal to Superintendent Green. Um, there were diverse people on this committee and still are who were, um, had various views on the project. Not everybody sat down at the table and said, I would vote for a $35 million bond. So we definitely had diverse views at the table at I'm the not start. Talking about oh, no, I'm, just saying, I'm talking about actual price tags. I'm going to go into that for actual price tags. So I'm going to take five minutes to give some overview to the whole group. Um, and hopefully it will address that. Um, so the committee decided to continue the work that was started in 2013, um, really in an interest to preserve time and money. Um, there was a lot of time and money put in then. It felt like there was some good uh, work to at least use as a start then. Um, and know that with escalating costs, it's time is not on our side. Right 
time is disgustingly expensive right now. Um, so we used the thorough feedback from 2013 to 2007 to really try to set priorities. You're gonna go through a, a similar process. Um, it was sought in day-long interviews where um, folks were here interviewing students and faculty and staff members all day for several days, anonymous surveys, uh, post-vote feedback um, from 2014. And so the reason why we approached this as looking at what the community said and, are, and raising out priorities without a price tag um, That's was, the problem. Yeah, well, was um, we wanted to say, what are the things that we know this community wants to see in a renovation? And so if we don't actually reflect those in a project, we felt that we could guarantee that it would fail. Um, there are so many different perspectives on this that if we didn't honor what we felt were the most common priorities and then try to build the project from there, um, we knew it, it, it was doomed. Um, and so people want to see what they value reflected in the project. And so it was really, we have to first understand the values, start adding a price tag to it, and walk them back from there. So it was really, we just wanted to really understand where is the community coming from, what do they want to see in the project. Um, and so that's how, that's how we started. So then we were able to give that to the architect and say, okay, these are the things that have to be highlighted, and these are the things that are that are the wish list that we don't that we don't want emphasized at all. Um, and so, along that whole process as well, you'll know that last year there was um, significant money put aside in the budget to cover uh, about half of the bond payment. So the fiscal responsibility was really coming in a much more creative and strategic budgeting trying to kind of lessen the flow of the community. So if these are the community's priorities, how do we kind of meet halfway with existing resources, and then how do we um, better address the, the priorities? So um, it's hard to reflect. Excuse it's, me, just a second. I have uh, this, a willingness to share airtime here, and I only will need about five minutes before we descend into the weeds. Oh, what? We're in the protocol right now, which is I'm giving a five-minute overview, and then we're going to dive into the process. And so it's actually it's not unfortunately I, that's what I said the strong facilitation of if we are going to get through this process together, then we've, we've got to descend into it. So I think that public comment might might be better for the end. I'm willing to wait, Thank but you. I don't want to spend the next two nope. hours arguing about whether we need a gym or whether we need a library or whether everybody agrees on a swimming pool. That's not the issue here. The issue is the way we're approaching this project. We are assuming this building is ours to renovate. It's 50 years old, it's time to give it up. So we need to step back a little bit and take a look at the options we have available to us of building the appropriate space for the appropriate needs at the appropriate time. That is one perspective, and I, I think you can drop that up in your small group and set it a priority of yours was to demolish and rebuild or send to area schools. I don't care fun. to demolish it, I care to stop owning this building because we're going to be spending the cost of renovating a 50-year-old obsolete building that was not a jewel when it was built. Uh, thanks. I appreciate the feedback. Um, what, we're, what we're being told is that the infrastructure is worth salvaging and that it's the most cost effective. I'm not approach. talking about getting rid of it. I'm talking about selling it to somebody else. Um, and getting into a partnership, public private partnership with a developer who takes over this school and allows us to build new what a, we need if, next door. If that's a priority for here, half the price. I would encourage you to bring that up in your small group and make sure. I don't want to go into a priority. small group because your small so, group sir, approach here is designed. We to looked at new construction. And we I know you look at new at construction, cost. and your your figures are just incorrect. They're, they're not correct. Well, they've been validated by architects from other firms, not just the one we worked with. And um, there's other things involved. Uh, we need space for a new school and, and everything else. So, like Jeff said, if if, <laughs> if building new is important to you, then then put all your votes behind that and we'll, we'll see what everyone here thinks. But that's what it's all about, is listening to everyone. The presented with does not take into account a creative public partnership between private enterprise and the school district, which would allow us to continue using the large spaces in this building, and build a classroom building that we need next door of 66,000 square feet at the annual at the annualized average of construction cost of 259 
dollars per square foot for a total of $17.5 million. So as facilitator, I really appreciate the feedback. I hope it comes up in your small group, but if we do want to engage together to find out where we all stand, I hope that we're able to finish this overview and jump into a process together. I don't want to jeopardize our ability to interact with one another. That's the most important part of it. So, so this is a person right here who's in the construction business, and this is what he does for a living. And you won't even. I want him to stay and participate. That's what the problem is with this committee. I, th I really would love him to stay and participate and give these ideas. That's the most important. We're so frustrated as a community. And stay and here. That's why. Stay here and work it through together. Is what I have to ask. Because you just consulted this court just made. It's terrible how you tried to hijack the process. Right. We're, there's a process, you have the time to speak along with everybody else, but you basically stood up and said, I'm going to take over this meeting. No, I don't care. No, that's to take exactly it over. what you did. No, I did so not. So we're all here at the same time to calmly discuss this with each other. I don't want to go into a small group to talk about meeting. program because we're there's looking for the, the right answer to the wrong the question. We're here to respect everyone's viewpoint and let everyone's voice be heard. And we're also here to move this project forward. So the community stated that they wanted to have a voice in what the priorities were for the renovation. And that's what we're about tonight. That's what the agenda was about tonight. All right, guys, deep breath. <laughs> Remember our agreements, right? They're there for a reason. When things get tough, we've got to remind ourselves of them. And so we, I, we have to expect divergent voices and how we deal with them together is, is a marker of our community. So uh, this project, this feels like a weird backup, I promise there's only two more bullet points. The project really was scaled back um, and really honed in on fewer priorities, but it was really hard as time passed on and construction costs had escalated. So the committee's work was cut out for them. Um, and so the community, I just want to remind people, it's inclusive of teachers, staff, students, community members, board members, and administration, everybody around this table practically introduce themselves as a community member as well. We are all in this together. We all want to see the school succeed and the students in it to have the best learning opportunities they possibly can. And so again, that common ground, we are in this together. It's really easy to get divisive, but here we are coming together for the sake of the school. So we can do that. And so just be, beware of the us versus them. And so I was asked to facilitate this process so that we would kind of be able to break down some of those boundaries um, and figure out what the group's priorities are. Um, so in, in an effort to get to the actual meat of the process, uh, know that I might have to give a little bit of structure and, and, and lean into facilitation as we go. Um, it's a great process once you get through it. I think it'll be worthwhile. Process uh, questions? Very, I'll try to be very. These thing, items here, are there mandates from the state? Air, was there air testing and so on? I think it's important when you do the survey to know that this is not inadequate. This is not adequate. And, you know, like, I don't see this building falling apart. I do see some things that need to be done. But I would like to know, if the air quality is bad and you have people here on a 1 to 10, what was the quality? I don't want the students here if, let's say, the air quality is 2 or 1 on a 1 to 10, that's not right. And how come you don't tell people that the priorities are here, how come you don't let people know that the state says we can't use this building in two years because the air quality is so bad or the heating system is <coughs> antiquated, which it is. That's a great question. You can note it for next time, as long as you can move on with the project. I think this is a thing that people felt that I talked to. They don't go to the meeting, so they really should, people should come or they should look on the website. And so everybody has a part, and I, I'm feeling that a lot of people don't have a part because they don't know about this and you never and all the discussion are in the print we don't know what's good and what's not good and just to build the building I, I don't see this building fall I'd like to see changes 
uh, I'd like windows and some other things, but not thirty-six million dollars to replace <laughs> windows. But anyways, getting so we don't know these, so we can start the survey. Uh, we can certainly flesh out some of the details that we can share in the future. Yeah, I mean, but you don't we have to do it now, do but in the future. Thank you. I'm not able to stay, but I feel Thank you. All right. So I am going to pass around, and of course you're going to help with that. These are the packages of feedback from uh, all stakeholders in the community. And you will have about 20 minutes. And I know that probably feels like a lot, but this is a lot to get through. And if we really want to honor the voice of the community, it's important to honor the voice that we have all for the here all right. Finish up where you're at. And make sure that you have a list of priorities that you've distilled down. So you have a few minutes to make sure that you have listed the priorities that you feel like have emerged from all this input. Your own individually. You don't have this is not as a group yet, but whatever you think there however many that you decide there are. But you'll want your own individual list before you go into a group. So we are just going to take five minutes to conclude this part of the activity. Um, it, between now and our next meeting, we will take these, tally them all together, and it will be fodder for the next meeting. So it was awesome to see so many community members here tonight. I hope to see you again next week. Um, and really, uh, before we jump into five minutes of kind of open discussion, what surprised you in the process? Um, you know, what has what will leave you thinking as you leave here? Um, how did you feel about the priorities or just the process of working together as a community? Um, but thank you. I think we had we had a bit of a rocky start, which sometimes happens when there's so much structure in the room in the form of a protocol. So, um, and just really, it was so heartening to see community members, teachers, students, board members, everybody working together. And once you started talking about your common priorities or having a shared voice, the whole tenor of the room changed. I mean, people, you know, things were pretty tense, and then once you really started to sit side by side, everything shifted, and I, I have absolute faith that, that will continue to happen until we get to renovation. So I'm just really grateful for your efforts, and then we have five minutes really to just talk about the process, talk about what emerged, and then board business. received a, a handout and it'll be part of the, the minutes when they're published so that everyone can go online and see that as well. I, Patrick, if I'm wrong, and Jess, feel free to correct me here, but um, we did ask the folks at Dorn and Whittier when they presented this proposal to us in August, what would new construction cost us? And they estimated, and if I'm wrong, guys, help me out, between 350 and 450 per square foot. Whereas the bond that was voted down, the proposal that was voted down, the cost was $170 per square foot to renovate. So, so half the cost. You're nearly there. In the minutes that were in the packet, uh, from that August 7th meeting when Dora and Woody were here, so the cost of renovations discussed for this, the $36.6 .6 million project was 170 a square foot. New construction was estimated at 325 to 350. Yep. So it's in the ballpark of twice as much per square foot. Yep. The Mount Abe itself 
its current footprint is 169,000 square feet. And the only added space that that proposal called for was the second gym and the, the entryway and the, the new locker rooms between the pool and the, the new gym. We weren't adding classrooms. We weren't adding any other spaces to that. So people who have a gym. Right, right. Where so where, um, where, where, where are they heard, I guess, because I have to get them in. So someone at the Bristol Forum was quoting numbers for construction that actually turned out to be from a different region. Um, I just say I, I haven't I have no idea where these numbers came from. Um, the every classroom that we have here is in use, correct? Mm -hmm. So we we could not get by with fewer classrooms. Um, and it was our impression that to build a new school, um, it would be it, it would be about a seventy million dollar project, and that didn't include utilities to the new place and raising this one. So it wasn't that we didn't talk about it. <laughs> Explain it to me. I just right. want to make sure people have. I think I think Chris did answer your question. I, I mean, there be at these meetings. There's a, a space for public comment. I would think that would be the most appropriate place for someone to raise an, an alternate view or maybe a better approach. Okay. Um, Chris, I, I, to piggyback on what Chris, Christy is saying, I think all of us engaged in this process and in this format, but I think we're not moving the dial really on what we're talking about. We're still talking about the same set of priorities and the same the same stuff, and I and I just wonder, and I don't know what it is. What kind of format could, if we toss this format out the window, where you guys all sat there, and we're all back here, and we raise our hand, and we say public comment, and we're acknowledged, and then we move on. What other format might there be that could really push? the conversation into some terrain that none of us have thought of yet. Because I think everybody's on board with the idea that we want to renovate. But I think there's also a feeling that we're being corralled into the same conversation that's happened for four years. And how can we how can we corral a different conversation so that so that, how can we have a different structure so that something different might come up? Yes, I agree with, with both Christy and Sue. This exercise just doesn't lend itself to that. You're, because from this exercise of these lists, you're not going to get anything different than what was already in this. Yes. Because that's what we started with. I, I, you know, I, the, the, there, there wasn't a place to put in, a, in as they say, out of the box idea. I lament that there were some who had different ideas who didn't stay for the activity. I'm it, not referring to that. Oh, no, I'm just I'm saying referring that. referring to us who stayed I, here. That I, I would have hoped to see that come, up, come out of our list. And so I am just feeling a tension between when we look at feedback from students and faculty and community members over the last four years, they say these are what their priorities are. And we want to also invite innovative thinking, but also honoring the voice of the community that says, this is what we want you to address in innovation. <coughs> So if we go too far in one direction, if we have a long time to get there, we're going to have a really expensive project that might not address the things the community is asking for. And so I, I just hope that as we work together to figure out how do we think out of the box while being in the box, you're a board that needs to operate in a certain way. I mean, legally, there are ways that we are charged with going about this, um, that we invite space for all of that, because we do have a majority of the community that is trying to tell us what they want to see in a renovation. And by saying, ah, that's not really what I'm interested in, we're not inviting all the voices of all the community members. And so we have to do what you're talking about and address all of this feedback that is coming from the people of the community as well. And like I said before we started the exercise, just because it was on, you weren't limited to what was on that sheet, you, you could put up anything. And, and I saw plenty of ideas that weren't, weren't on that sheet. So. Um, I, I felt like I could 
present an idea, but there was no point in the process in our small group to have a discussion about what that was not in, in the process. So yes, I could present my idea in my, you know, my very short phrase of an idea. Nobody really knew what I was talking about um, because it was just short phrase on the, on the board. In these small groups, small groups are great. I would love to see maybe for a next one where a small group discussion oriented um, procedure or we could break up into small groups, have discussions, maybe that each of the people that are on this committee be in a different group, so that we could have discussions about these out-of-the-box out of ideas. Some of the ideas that I'm thinking of actually are ones that would cost money, like things that I, I could see doing things differently that would involve the community without spending money on doing. Um, and I, I don't know, I didn't know how to present that in there. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also say anyone's free to send me those ideas in an email, and I'll, I'll work them in as, as best I can to, to make sure everyone feels that, that their ideas are being heard um, when I'm working up the next agenda. David? Um, and um, there's, a, there's a small group, I think 20 people, who are residents, citizens, commoners who met are in the process of imagining a forum. It's called the Five Town Community Engagement, but maybe it'll be the Five Town Community Empowerment Forum. And it'll be a half day on January 6, 2018, to go deeper, than, like what you're talking about. And hopefully it'll be something separate and different, and it'll kind of like feed into what I hope is this combined movement to get to a vote where we get to yes on something that can be bought in by the whole community, which is key. Um, and, and in order to do that, we're going to have to figure out how to entice people who voted no to vote yes. And that also means getting them at a table and having them have to listen to them and, and bring it out. So on January 6th, who saved the day if we don't have a place yet, but on January 6th, 2018, we'll have this little gathering, and it'll it'll have some of the same elements, but it'll have, it'll look significantly different. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I just want to come back to my comment in the beginning. Um, I'm curious what is going to be communicated from this meeting, and how is it going to be communicated? Um, just, my assumption is, like in the past. The district is going to maybe send an email, right? And you can go to this link and check the minutes. I, I just wonder about what we're going to communicate about this meeting and how it's going to be distributed so that people can really maybe get more of a sense of some really important features. Like a lot more people showed up. There was right. a lot more discussion. Um, and we want to keep this momentum, you know, right? like the minutes. If it's just the bland kind of, you know, I just wonder again about what we're communicating and how we're communicating it so that people can really get more of a sense. It was really great to be here because there's much more of a sense of the complexity of it uh, and the depth of what people are doing and, and how this is tricky to kind of figure out. Um, and I just think we haven't gotten, we haven't been able to share that, I think, digitally. Sure. And if we could, I think that would be important. Yeah. The minutes are always posted within a day or two of the meeting on the um, ANESU.org website. Um, and I can send out a front porch forum message to all the five towns saying that they are available and to check them out. If someone has a better idea, I am on what the next the meeting idea. is. The whole yep. she's she's like, we're going to announce that tonight. <laughs> 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 and then Gay is yep. here. It'll be in the independent. Um, this is also and it'll be on Meet TV as well. You want to experience the meeting. Yep. Yep. <laughs> it, it, it's all on tape. <laughs> Uh, I have an observation and then a question and then another question. Uh, my observation is this. Uh, in our group, there was a lot of uh, emphasis in kind of several different ways about community involvement, community engagement, community empowerment, community ownership. But the main common word was community. Uh, that's my observation. My question is to uh, the group, to us. Um, 
Uh, are are there are are is there a feeling within the room that um, uh, that a, a great deal in that uh, uh, arena might happen uh, in uh, this uh, session that David Brin mentioned uh, that happens on uh, January sixth? If if you feel there's promise for more community engagement. Uh, outside of this process, um, would you raise your hand? So that you're listening? Okay, that answers my second question. And then I, now I have a third question. And that is, what will you as a board do with that information regarding the schedule of the vote? And what, how is that the sort of thing? So we're, we're a committee, we're, we're not a board. Um, just to make that distinction there. Uh, our next meeting is going to be next Wednesday, December 6th at 6 o'clock here in the large cafeteria. And um, we need to move, we need to take the priorities that were developed tonight and attach them to a dollar amount and have a discussion as to what everyone thinks and if that changes the priorities um, when the dollar amount comes up and um, decide on a, on a date. And it, it is important to keep in mind, one second, with um, a town meeting day vote, we still have to be done by about the 20th of January or so because then that decision has to go back to the Mount A board. They have to convene to accept it and it has to be warned, I believe, February 4th, you looked up for me? If you look at the last article I wrote, I called uh, Will Senning, who's director of elections, and the, and the dates in that article. He said early February. Right. That might be I think the right date. I'd have to look it up yeah. in my own article. That's okay, but, but he said this is the last date yeah. that a town meeting can be warned, the whole meeting and still be legal. Right. It's 30 days before the Yeah, it's 30 days. No less than 40. Mostly 45 days. No less than 45. No less than, yeah. Or no more than 45. No less than 30, yeah. no more than 40. Exactly. So just just keep that in mind, too, that we, we don't have until town right. meeting day right. if the work is, has got yeah, to be done before that, just, just so everyone's aware. Um, do you work by majority consensus? How do you generally work as a group? It, Decisions have been by majority in the past. You had a comment? Yeah, I, I guess I just had a question of, of what's to be gained from from the additional meeting or group that can't be accomplished during these meetings. Like, what's the, what, what I guess what's behind that is my question. Like, to have a side meeting to what we're currently working on all together. Everybody's in the same room right now, hearing the same things, having the same conversation. What it, what it's the the other group aimed at for the other committee? Well, in a word, it's about power. It's a very different power dynamic. See, the central core here is the power. You're the voters. You're the ones who've got the power. What we're talking about is a situation where there isn't that kind of a power dynamic. It's like everybody's participating. Everybody's gift is welcomed. It's more free flowing. It's more of an outside circle of getting to vision, community vision, community ownership, uh, community empowerment, which is really the essence of that amazing standard, uh, Stanford publication that was uh, distributed by Krista Syringa. Yep. It's worth a read to look at the differences on the spectrum between community information versus community empowerment what we're really interested in. We'd like to figure out a way to get the people who voted no to feel like they were heard and that the ultimate, um, and, and they were part of the designers of it. And so it's, it's an outer ring that becomes the foundation for getting the yes. <clears throat> well, if I can. Yep. Jump in and ask you a question, David, just to be clear, and, and I think where you're going with this, is the agenda, your agenda in January for this meeting, it's not necessarily about the money renovation, am I right? I mean, that's not, 
if just if you could talk about right, that a little bit more, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, it's broader than that because it's really the, it's really bigger than the building. It's about like the function of the building. It's the relationship of the building to the community. It's um, it's more of like the building is the building, and we're thinking. So you can say, well, Mount Abraham Union Middle slash High School. Just getting back to get acronyms right. That's a building, and so you can talk about the renovation. But it's also a community. It's an organism, and that this dynamics of this this meeting that we're talking about is is to spread it out always, so that you you think about how the building relates to the curriculum that we relates to lifelong learning and relates to the community in a more, it's fluffy, it's more, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like more of a designing, early stage design, which is really mentioned in that Stanford publication. That, that is the first step of true community planning. Just a, it's a great way to go. That's what we're going to try to do. And we'd invite everybody to come. It's going to be fun, I think. And, um, we have uh, we've made really huge progress on Saturday. It's really pretty creative on some of the uh, notions. There'll be different rooms, and we can go deep into a particular room, and, and uh, every gift will be heard, and it'll be part of the record. And, and uh, we really hope that we can get out the folks who um, didn't vote for it and will vote for it. So then we come back together because you know ultimately we've got to get something. So if we go with pretty much the same, I don't feel like we're going to get to success. I feel like we have to open up a different possibility. Now Steve spoke tonight, and I don't know Steve, but I did see what he wrote, which is something I had never read about. And um, basically, which is to you know to sell this off or have a public-private cooperation in an infrastructure here that becomes like a little incubator of a building, yeah, and then the school becomes goes into a separate place. Who knows? Maybe he's full of beans. But it's an interesting concept, and, it, and I think he's credible. So I think we need to open up to that kind of possibility. And that's what I think we'll do with it. Okay. Uh, I was just going to offer that the, the meeting on the 6th, I see it, at least, it's very much complementary with your work. I think this, the single greatest lack of this committee and the one that I was on four years ago is that grounding in the public and going out there trying to grapple with uh, people's relationship to this place as an emblem. For me, it's an emblem of what we stand for in the community. A lot of people just don't see it that way. We want to broaden the conversation so we bring those people in as much as possible. The other thing I just was going to mention before, um, I live in Starksboro, and I'm going to all pen a little write-up of this event on my front porch forum. Um, and I think it'd be great if other people, That's whether on the board or not, in, in five towns, and if there's overlap, two people do it, no big deal. But I'm, I'm going to do that at Starksboro, just to help get the word out. I saw there was a hand back here before. Got one back here. Here. I just have a housekeeping question. In terms of, um, I've been asked by quite a few people, and maybe Patrick, you can speak to this. Um, one of the concerns that a group of folks that I spoke with over time, how does this bond, if it does, if it were to pass at that thirty plus million dollars, how does it affect our CLA and our what we pay in each town, you know, common level of appraisal in terms of our student costs? at the school. Does the student cost go way up per pupil? Or I've never seen that discussed anywhere. There's nobody ever <coughs> talking about it. And I've actually been asked that quite a bit and I kind of, geez, I don't know. I never thought of that. And now that Secretary Holcomb came out last week and made some statements that were a little frightening, and you're reading the you're reading newspaper here and there that other schools or smaller elementary schools are consolidating because they're not going to get the amount of state aid they have in the past. With this project make us appear like we're a rich community. For years ago, they used to call it a gold mine town because of what our per pupil cost is. So 
there are actually a number of answers to the number of questions. That you just yeah, asked. I know. <laughs> I, people keep asking me, and I'm like, no, I'm not an administrator. I don't. I can research it to the best of my ability, but it doesn't have any impact on the CLA. Okay. So that's okay. each town has their own assessment, and right. it's dependent on the cycle in which your town does their appraisals, okay. and that yep. determines the CLA. As a new district, there'll be one tax rate for every town okay. based on the one budget in which this money will appear. Okay. Um, so the only thing that changes the tax rate in each town is that CLA. Okay. Um, in terms of the cost per pupil, so right now there's a million dollars in the Mount Aid budget for construction services to help address some of the needs in the building and that money would be applied to the bonds. Um, currently that million dollars counts against us in terms of cost per pupil. And there's a spending threshold which if you yeah. spend beyond, you're penalized for. Right. Currently, yeah. the money that's in there counts against us in terms of that spending threshold. Should we pass a bond, and that money gets applied to the bond, we apply for a waiver upon the, the approval, the affirmative vote of the bond, um, and in all likelihood, there's no guarantees, but in all likelihood, uh, a bond for construction on a building that has the needs that this building does, um, is waived and that money no longer counts against us in terms of our pure people spend. And who does the waiving? Is it a legislative action or is it? Agency of Education. So it's, so it's Agency of Education. Okay. That's interesting. Thank you. I, don't, I just want to make sure everybody actually does get home tonight. So go ahead. I just want to, I just want to, come out again with a hard-nosed note about finances, right? One of the things that really struck me from this handout that you handed out before our exercise was the comments from the community about why the bond got voted down. And it was money, it was money, it was money, it was money, right? And so it's just not clear from, to me, you know, this, this process was great. It was, you know, it was interesting and, and informative. But the community out there who took the time to answer these things, these questionnaires, all said the ask was too big. So I'm just encouraging you to, you know, those people might not have been in here tonight. The ones who were the strong no voters, I mean, a lot of them left before this happened. So you're not capturing that information, but in that questionnaire, you did. And I think it's important to remember that. I'd like to um, just add to what you're saying is that I read those comments in, um, in 2014. I also think there was a real lack of um, confidence in the administration in the district. And so I read a lot of the um, comments sort of in between the lines that were it was about the money and <clears throat> it was about a lack of confidence in the um, district administration. So, so I think that, yes, money, the <coughs> fiscal um, size of the project was one of the priorities in, in I think everybody's group. But I also um, just want to say I think that the tenor in the community is different. I think that if we can get to those deeper conversations with people in the community and talk about um, the, the bigger vision that we can we can get a lot of those people who voted no in 2014 for money and this other reason to really look at the school in a different way and see it as an asset to the community and not a liability. <clears throat> so that's what I, I hope we're all going to work for. Yeah, I looked at our, the, the serve, whatever you call it, survey. I wish next time when you do it, are you going to do this again, that any money items not be included because it skews. If somebody was going to vote a five for the music and then they decided, well, I'll vote 27 and 18. Fiscal responsibility, that's, that, that should be there regardless. But what I'm looking at is what's up there. If you look at the money, I'm sure that this project could be cut in half if you use what's up there. And I think the jib is important, but you know what? I think maybe to 
depending again on the population, we need to look at like a middle school or something. So I think we could do this. I think it would be half, but maybe we need to, to work on what's there on the wall and maybe have some other process to refine it or, or but I think it was, I didn't like the process at first, but when we finished, I thought it was good because we were able to talk to each other. Thank you. Uh, just clarification on one point. I'm sorry, my name is Jessica. I don't know who you are. But, uh, you know, I know you. I don't know you. Troy. Troy, hi, Troy. Um, <laughs> you were trying to give us a bunch of backstory before we um, selected items that we were in favor of. And did you say that if there was a new gym that it would be in place of the pool? Or did I misunderstand? No, I said that was a hot topic of discussion the okay. first go around. Okay, good. And it seems to not be talked about now. Excellent. Thank you. Um, if we could take a minute just to finish up the last piece of committee business. Uh, Allison wrote a great survey that we'd like to put up. Survey Monkey, right, is going to be the vehicle for that? Because um, I guess this is an action item, actually. So um, if we would like to move ahead with putting that survey out, I'd need a motion to do that. Second. So moved. Second. Any discussion about getting additional feedback? Mm -hmm. I think we all agree it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Any uh, nays? Any abstentions? All right. That passes. Final closing comments, and then we'll, I'll take a motion to adjourn. I just want to thank all of you. Mm -hmm. I think people need to know how many years some of you have been doing this. I was on three different transportation committees over 40 years, and nothing ever happened to change. So <laughs> this has got to, we've got to get people together Okay, to do something here. And I appreciate everything you're doing and how long you've been at it because I <coughs> you believe in this. Thank you. Thank you. And <laughs> any other comments? <clears throat> do you want us to do this survey? Um, it was more just to look it over and, and stuff, but we'll put it out on, on SurveyMonkey and everybody can respond that way. We'll post the link. Just go online to our website. <laughs> <laughs> the question was how will they get it? How they know? No, they'll put the address out. For the survey monkey? So we'll put that out on, depending on how fast we can get it up on Survey Monkey, we'll get we'll let Gayan post the link in her article, we'll put it on Facebook, and we'll put it out in the Five Town Front Porch Forums. And we'll, we'll, yes, it'll be there, okay. So, um, everybody good? I don't want to neglect anyone, but thank you <laughs> all for coming. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye.